The future of car making, especially for luxury and premium car makers, can probably be broadly classified and summarized into three main guiding principles. Firstly, technology, loads of it. Secondly, electrification, naturally. And thirdly, sustainability across the entire supply chain. But there's also this important fourth pillar, this pillar that makes a car maker stand out and special on its own. If your brand name is Mini, that pillar has always been this air and energy of faithfulness, fun, even the idea of being an icon. Today, we are here in Munich to get up close with two new members of the new Mini family. We're going to talk drive trains, we're going to talk design, we're going to talk materials. So let's get into all of that. Mini is on track to becoming a fully electric brand when the 2030s swing around. While the only all-electric series production model we've gotten thus far is the Mini Electric, the brand promises that there will be many flavours of electrified go-karts in the years to come. Naturally, this will span various body styles, sizes, and performance levels. We hear even John Cooper Works models will be electrified. Our time at the preview event is giving us a chance to get up close with two out of three fully electrified models confirmed. The first of which is the iconic Mini Hatch. Thus far, we've referred to this little fella according to its engine variant, from the entry-level Mini 1 all the way up to the hotted up Mini John Cooper Works. Moving forward, however, Mini's iconic OG model will be referred to as the Mini Cooper, meaning Cooper as a term will no longer be an engine variant. Within the new Cooper family, expect both 3-door and 5-door variants as well as a convertible too. But back to the specific car you see in these images. This is the all-new, all-electric Mini Cooper. Mini says that among the qualities that it kept from the outgoing car were the overall facial expression and the proportions from the car's headlamps to its grille. But the new three-door Cooper manages something else one hardly expects from a new car in today's age. It's actually 13mm shorter than its predecessor. At the same time, Mini says it still managed to extend the car's wheelbase. The car looks better proportioned from the side, with its overhangs shortened yet again and its wheels pushed even further out into the corners. As promised, new Minis no longer use any chrome for sustainability reasons. Instead, the surround that you see on the grille is painted over in a colour called Vibrant Silver, which is meant to give it that extra glimmer. All this has been very cool thus far, but there's even more awaiting when you step in. Yet another highlight of the new Mini family is this brand new design language over here. Mini says that these three components all together forms what it calls the Mini Interaction Unit, and that's made up of this steering wheel, this very, very revolutionary circular OLED display, as well as this control panel with, you know, touch switches that kind of call back to previous Mini models. The three components here pay direct homage to Sir Alex Isigonis' original Mini. Whereas that car was characterised by its ethos of smart simplicity, the new family puts a modern spin on it, in a philosophy Mini is calling charismatic simplicity instead. The steering wheel has been made compact to cohere with the car's go-kart driving experience. The toggle switches here have thankfully been retained, but as mentioned, the party piece is a 240mm rounded OLED display. This is apparently the largest of its kind ever introduced in a car. Using a circular rather than rectangular space has given Mini free reign to be playful with its UI UX design, and it's really gone all out with the new operating system. There are eight different interfaces that Mini is calling Experience Modes, three of which are actual driving modes that change the driving character of the car. Our favourite look, however, is definitely Timeless Mode, which brings back the spirit of the classic Mini in full, with a serif typeface and massive speedometer against a light background. As for the different drive modes, there's Core, Go Kart for enthusiastic driving, and Green, an efficiency mode which uses micro animations of a hummingbird and a leopard. Or is it Cheetah to tell you whether you're driving efficiently or aggressively? And because Mini says that it's working towards sustainability as one of its key goals, it has completely eliminated the use of leather in the cabin. So these seats, even though like the material feels quite leather-like, is actually not made of leather. And also on the dash, we have these fabric material to reduce the number of components used as well, which will help with recyclability as well as resource efficiency. It's also integrated these very nice design accents to give the car a bit more pop, even though it's the same material. Then for added visual variation, a cleverly hidden projector can cast different projection patterns on the dashboard. Very briefly in terms of power, the car that we're taking a look at specifically here is the more powerful electric variant known as the Cooper SE. A single motor here will produce 215 brake horsepower, while the hatch will be powered by a 54.2 kilowatt hour battery too. Mini says that the two new all-electric variants of the Cooper will boost a range of between 300 to 400 kilometers, which is far more than the 200-ish km we get on today's Mini Electric. Now, let's talk the Mini Countryman. Mini is really positioning this more as a crossover SUV, and in contrast to the Cooper, you can already feel that this is more rugged with the use of rectangular and square shapes to give it more muscularity. 
One interesting fact, the taillights behind have been made narrower so as to accommodate the countryman badging on the tailgate. But perhaps the most significant thing you should know is that this is also the largest countryman we've gotten from Mini yet. Over its predecessor, the car's length has increased by 140mm and its height by 16mm. Now, the decision to grow the countryman again may sound controversial, but Mini says that it wants to offer those who love the brand a truly practical and spacious car. One that will last families through different generations. Expect more with space and passenger space too. Inside the new Mini Countryman as well, Mini has tried to distinguish this model from the one that we've just talked about. So the same theme of, you know, vertical, squarish accent continues even on the aircon vents. If we're talking about the side door handles, these are squarish and vertical as well. And of course, you get a lot more space inside because this is generally just a bigger car. As for powertrains once again, the electric range will start with the Countryman E, in which a single motor produces 188 brake horsepower. Once again, the car that we have here is the more powerful variant, the Countryman SE. This will be the brand's first all-electric, all-wheel drive vehicle, mustering out a total of 308 brake horsepower. A 64.7 kilowatt hour battery pack on both variants promises a rated range of around 450 kilometers too. Still, fret not if you're not ready for the electric switch yet. Combustion-powered variants of both the Mini Cooper and Mini Countryman will still be made available, with the Countryman even having a diesel powertrain in certain markets. By now you may be thinking, wait, didn't you mention three fully electric models? Well, we'll still have to wait to see it in its production form, but Mini has confirmed that the third all-electric model of the new Mini family will be derived from the Ace Man concept. This will be a five-door crossover that sits in between the Cooper and Countryman in size. Unlike those cars, however, this will be a purely electric model without combustion-powered variants offered. Alright guys, so that was a very very quick run through of our time with the two new stars of the Mini family. What do you guys think of this new ethos of charismatic simplicity as well as digitalization? Let us know in the comments, don't forget to hit the like, share and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this video and also follow us on TikTok for more. For now, I'll leave you guys with a digital ambassador that I'm sure you'll be seeing very much more often in the future. Bye! And bye Spike!